Thank you. It's my, my pleasure to be here today to, to tell you about uh, our research, really a discovery at, at MIT in 2010. It's a, it's a phenomenon called thermal power waves. And it's a new way of converting chemical energy to electrical en energy, which may or may not have, have a significant global Im impact. Um, I wanted to start, start off, though I promised my, my daughters that I would say, say hi, hi to them. They're, 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 they're watching this on the, on the web. Um, and so I've, this, is, this is Mary, she's, she's seven, and Ellie, she's five, and this is Grace, she's three, and they're, they're picking blue, blueberries here. This is my, uh, this is my favorite pi picture. Um, but uh, it's a good place to, to, to start be, be, because Mary, Ellie, and Grace happen to be sitting very close to what, 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 what I think is the future to the, to, to the global energy problems that we have. And if you look, if you look closely, can you, can, can you, see, can you see what it is? You'll, uh, you'll understand what I'm talking about at the, at the end of my talk, okay? But I'm gonna start, but I'm gonna start off um, giving a primer on, we're gonna talk about carbon. And hopefully you've had high school chemistry, you know that the carbon in your pencil, that's graphite. And graphite is an interesting material. It's, it's carbon atoms, and it forms a, a crystal of carbon atoms in these layers. Uh, what you may not know is that uh, carbon is actually a very good conductor of heat. It, uh, heat can flow very fast through, through graphite, uh, about 20 times faster than gold or a metal. A metal bar can, 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 can conduct heat quite well. Uh, graphite also conducts electricity. So it's very good for shaping and flowing energy. It's a very good way to manipulate energy. But I, but I can do better than it. If I take a sheet of graphite, I can peel it off and it becomes graphene. A single layer of that gra graphite is gra graphene. If you draw on a piece of paper with a pencil, you're making lots of gra graphene. Heat moves even faster in graphene, just in the plane. You can find the energy just inside this, in this plane. Very, very useful. But you, you can go one step further, in fact, if you take this graphene sheet and you roll it into a cylinder, a molecular size cylinder. You can fit about four to five water molecules inside this, this, this cylinder. So it's, it, it's a very tiny wire. It's called a, a single-walled carbon nanotube. And it's an even faster con conductor of, of heat. It's about 100 times faster than, than gold. It's an, it's an ideal uh, thermally conductive or, he or, or heat con conducting wire. And it's also electrically conductive. Okay? It's a useful way to, 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 to move and to, to direct energy. And this, this field is the field that I work, work in. Turning graphite into these new materials, that's the field of nanotechnology. I'm a nanotechnologist. Uh, this, this process of taking this relatively old material and making new and exotic ones that we've just started to study in the past 20 years is called nanotechnology. They have new and unusual properties for us to explore. Okay. All right, so what is a thermal power, power wave? I'll, I'll get right into it. So uh, if, if you heat a fuel, it will chemically react and it will release more heat. Uh, that's the, it's a basic definition. So uh, because of that, you can make a chain reaction. And in fact, if you take a fuel and you put it near one of these thermally conductive nano conduits, you can set off a chain reaction that travels down the length of the, of the conduit. It, it makes a wave, a very special kind of wave. Not, not, like, not like an ocean wave, it's called a soliton. And that wave has properties. It can push electrons out of, the, out of this tube, like squeezing toothpaste out of a, out of a tube. Uh, and it, it produces a very high voltage pulse, a very high polarity, a high power density pulse. And we discovered it for, for, for the first time at MIT in, in 2010. This is how it operates in, pra in, 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 pra in practice. Instead of taking just one single walled carbon nanotube, I can spin them into a yarn, much like the threads that make up your clothing. Okay, so th this is actually a carbon yarn. It's porous, so fuel can absorb inside of this, uh, of this yarn. And, and, and if you do so, and use a laser pulse, say, you can make this thermal wave that propagates along the length in a non-destructive way. The thing to keep, keep in mind is that as this wave is propagating, it's pushing uh, electrical, it's pushing electrons out down the length of this, of this fi fiber. It's a, it's, a, it's a new and interesting phenomenon. You have converted the, the, the energy in the chemical fuel into an electrical power pulse. Okay. And this is the data, I just have a little bit of data in my, in my talk. This is, this is voltage versus time. And you're supposed to see here that if you launch the reaction at one end, you get a positive voltage. And if you launch the reaction at the other end, but keep the polarity the same, you get a negative voltage. So the, so the, the electrons are, are following the wave. There's a link between the, the thermal wave and the electrons that, that are being moved along the length. 
this is uh, started a research area in my laboratory at MIT, which, which, is, which has been quite, quite, uh, quite, loot, quite, quite, quite fun for, for us. Um, why do we care? Um, there are a couple different reasons. So just here are some, some quick numbers. If you, so if, if, if we could trade all of our lithium ion ba batteries, say, if we could power them off of liquid fuels, things that are bio-derived, say glucose, ethanol, methane, uh, forget the environmental benefits, there's an immediate benefit in that you get a, a much higher energy density. You can get about 20 times the energy um, in the, same, in the same, same space if you use things like ethanol, glucose, and, and, and methane. But we need ways to convert those kind of fuels into electricity directly. Okay, uh, thermal power, power, power waves, one un unusual pro property that they have, they have a very high power density. If you want to power a car, you want to step on the gas, uh, it's a power density problem. You, you need the energy to be released in a short amount of time. It, it doesn't matter how much energy you're storing, it's got to be released in a certain amount of time. So we need new ways in, in, in which to store and deliver en energy to, to, uh, uh, for, 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 for the applications that we want to, that we want to power. We have a high-speed camera here to capture the progress of the reaction. And the oscilloscope is connected to measure the electricity produced. This was the filmed filament the heats up to start it. Starting to glow. It happens in a tenth of a second. Yeah, that was it. OK, turn it off. The camera captures the action at 4,000 frames a second. Watch that bundle of black threads. They're coated in a secret fuel. It's not a secret fuel. As the fuel burns, those strands directly convert the heat into electricity very efficiently. In proportion to its weight, this battery puts out as much as 14 times more power than a lithium ion battery. So an interesting pro property of, of these waves and of these materials is that al although you, you see that the, that, that the wave is reaching temperatures that, that are incandescent, and, and this is carbon. What happens to your charcoal briquette when it's when it's uh, when it's um, com combusting in, in in air? It it burns and becomes uh, carbon, di carbon dioxide. But actually, that doesn't happen. The carbon lattice itself isn't isn't affected. In fact, you can launch multiple waves over and over again. So this is supposed to show you that this is we're measuring the voltage as the wave propagates, and this is the temperature. You're reaching temperatures in this nano space that can melt steel. But the carbon, uh, the, the carbon exists and can be, um, and you can launch these waves over and over again. So this, this wave propagates in such a way that it doesn't uh, react with oxygen and burn away. It's a very interesting property of this feature, of, of, this, of this system. And what, what it means is, is that uh, there are other opportunities. So the carbon survives this high temperature and can be used over and over and over again. And uh, this op opens up the, po the possibility, if, if, if you get a little bit of power out of one, what do you do with, with batteries in your electronic de device? You can hook them together, and uh, you can actually deliver a, a, a fuel vapor. And as the vapor condenses, you can launch successive waves uh, over and over again, and you can use that and, uh, to, to make what, what's called a fuel cell, uh, a new a fundamentally new kind of fuel cell that, that'll take any kind of liquid fuel and convert it to electricity with very high power density. So let's take a look. Whoops. Okay. Yeah, and, and, and in fact, if you look closely, so this is, if it's show, showing up here, this is here, we're, we're powering a device on formic acid vapor. Formic a acid is a, is a potential biofuel. It's found in, in, fi in fire ants, which, which I'm sure in, in Florida you know, you know every, everything about. Um, but if, if you just expose this to formic acid vapor, you should be seeing it. You, you see this wave, there's actually a swelling mechanical con contraction that travels up and down the, the uh, con conduit per providing useful power. Okay, so, so this is the, the project that we're working on, on now. It's a fundamentally new kind of fuel, fuel cell. It, it, will take, uh, it will take fuel vapor. That vapor can condense onto the, the ar ar array. You launch the wave and generate a pulse of power. You can do this in, su in succession many, many times per, per millisecond to make a, a pulse, power, pulse power generator. And we've, we've made some modest progress towards that, towards that, that goal. Um, we, we've also made energy scavenging devices. One thing, I'm, I'm, I'm sure you, you, you've all seen these uh, silica gel packets that, that, that are found in your iPhones and, and in your shoes. So silica gel is a desiccant. What it does is it takes water vapor from, from the air and it can condense it to liquid water inside the pores of the silica gel. You, you can, it's, it's such a, a, a powerful 
material, it can scavenge all of the humidity in, a, in, a, um, in the box or, or, or your container. So, the, so carbon materials can do the same thing, but they can do it for, uh, for hydrocarbon materials. Uh, things like tiling or hexane or oil from the, from the uh, oil vapors from the in, in environment. So think about uh, when you're fueling a vehicle, the fugitive e emissions. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, um, it, it's an interesting application space to think, to, to, to think of where you can literally grab energy from the environment, can condense it onto this device and, and power, uh, power electronics um, continuously with, with this kind of energy scavenging device. So, so that this da data is, is, supposed to, is supposed to show you that a device like, like this will, will actually absorb ab about five or seven per percent of, a, of its weight pretty, pr pretty quickly, uh, just exposure to very, very small, two, 200 parts per million of, uh, of oil vapor at, at room temperature. Okay, so how does this fit into th to the global energy picture? Well, to some extent, it, it doesn't really impact the global uh, energy picture, except in the following way, and, and, and in fact, uh, and we're, we're used to looking at graphs like this, that this is, uh, th this is billions of barrels of, of oil e equivalent per, per year uh, on, a, on a global basis, and, and this is uh, essentially where the world get, gets its energy from. And uh, if you look along this direction, if you forecast out, out, out in time, it is a pretty bleak, bleak picture because uh, the tr traditional energy space that, that uh, the traditional en energy sources that we've been using to, to power our planet are, are be, be becoming in smaller and smaller uh, supply. And in fact, this, so, the, so, so the upward growth of this curve, the fact that demand is getting larger, um, may, be, may be seen as something, uh, um, may be seen in a, in a negative Capacity. I mean, I, I look at this graph, and uh, I'm, a, I'm a scientist, uh, and, I, and I'm also an optimist. And, and I mean, one, one thing that we don't focus on on this graph are, the, are these, are these un, unusual points here, um, these, these points where, out of, hi, out of history, something that was previously useless um, actually started to contribute to our, to, to our total energy port, 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 port portfolio. And this happens uh, silently, you know, maybe without much fan, fanfare, but some, something that was before completely useless, maybe a useless rock in, in the ground. Science and, te and te technology uh, converts what was useless into usable energy. And uh, we saw, you know, we, we framed the debate in terms of technologies we have today. I think it, it's a big mistake. If you put your head back into, into, into the historical periods here, uh, would you have been able to predict the way in which these technologies have developed, for good or for bad? Um, would you have been, ab been able to predict before um, the, the rise of natural gas or, or crude oil? So uh, with each of these arrows, there was a scientific and engineering series of discoveries that, that turned essentially something that was of little value into tremendous value. And that's the point that I wanna make for my talk is that so you start off, crude oil has very little, va little value. It was uh, science and chemistry and chemical engineering that essentially gave us the world that we have to today. It, it, it turned this resource from, 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 from the ground into, into fuel. Uh, same thing with uranium ore. Um, nuclear physics turned, turned this ore into, uh, into the nuclear pow power industry. It gave us this op option. And I'm, I'm not putting thermal power, power waves on par with, with this, but my point is that every new discovery, every new energy technology that we have uh, allows us, allows scientists to take materials we haven't considered before and translate them into potentially a viable energy solution. My, my last point, my most important point, is that this is done with people. People are the most important resource. Uh, scientists and engineers are the most important. Science and, te and technology, that's the domain of, of human activity. And this is the final graph that I want to, pr the, the, that I want to show. This is uh, scientists performed by, by people. We need more scientists, engineers, and mathematicians if you want to solve this pro problem. That's the, that's the real resource that's going to solve the global energy challenge. You take a look here. Th this is from the Digest of Education Statistics. This is from two, 2010. I, I think we're covered in communications and journalism, and psy <laughs> psychology is doing quite, quite, quite well, right? And, and, I'm, a, and I'm, a, I'm a strong supporter of the visual and performing arts. But, but, but we need, to, we need to, to recruit this generation. It's a, it's a call to action for this generation. We need scientists, engineers, we need, we need mathematicians. Uh, that's where the, we, we need to mine the depths of the human mind, and that's where our, the answers are gonna come. 
Uh, so just in, 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 in summary, the, the, the discovery of thermal power waves, it was a pleasant surprise for, 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 for us. It wasn't predicted by, by theory. Uh, it's a new phenomenon for the, con for, for the conversion of things like biofuels to electricity. It's at a very basic and fundamental stage. Um, but it serves as an example, maybe a small example, of what remains undiscovered in the search for energy solutions, right? So, and it underscores the, the importance of scientific discovery and the role of scientists. I hope that we, when we extend that gra graph out, I, I hope that maybe there'll be a branch upward and that will be thermal power, power waves in, enabling some new material, some new re resource to contribute to, 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 to global e energy um, sub supplies. So become a scientist and save the world. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.